I just sent it out to a, a few different people here. Uh, what what part of the world are you in, uh, Paul? I'm in South Wales, the UK. Oh, okay. Uh, originally, I'm from London. Okay, so it's about eight o'clock your time right now. Uh, seven o'clock. Okay, so you're five hours. Okay, some of uh, a couple of my team members are uh, in the area, but they're a little bit, I guess, further east than you. So I guess some of the areas are six hours ahead of uh, East Coast U.S. time. Yeah, my co-founder's in Texas, so um, we're an Anglo-American team. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, yeah. so are we. Uh, I, I actually have a token launching uh, on Saturday, so we're in uh, our, you know, crunch week right here of, uh, you know, trying to get everything ready for launch on Saturday. And, you know, we have some team members in uh, UK, and then, you know, we're doing some AMAs with some friends that are in Australia. And with the time difference between the three places, it's almost impossible to find a time that's <laughs> not 3 o'clock in the morning for somebody. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, it gets pretty crazy. But uh, I am recording this, so uh, I will post this. Uh, I usually don't do too many AMAs on, uh, you know, Sunday afternoons. Uh, but, you know, obviously with your time difference, I can't do like 7, 8 o'clock at night, you know, because it would be a little bit too late for you. So, uh, you know, I'm going to pin this in the room and I will also uh, post this to uh, my YouTube channel. So uh, I will hype this up uh, quite a bit over the next uh, few days for sure. So everybody will get to uh, watch it at some point or another. So, cool. all right. So um, how would you like to uh, go about it? Do you want to just uh, do you want to take the lead and just kind of conduct it like you would normally do an AMA or do are you OK for me asking you a few questions? Yeah, uh, ask questions if you want, by all means. If any of the other guys want to ask questions as well, that's fine by me. All right, that sounds uh, pretty good. Uh, why don't we start it off by you just, uh, you know, telling uh, everybody and introducing everybody to eat, eat. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, my name's Paul. I'm the CEO of eat, eat. And I originally, uh, my original life was a, a lawyer in London um, for 13 years. And I gave that up and retrained as a carpenter. And in the end, that led me to building my first restaurant, um, which we run. And we're our second restaurant now. So I'm actually a restaurateur now. My family run the restaurants with me. And we've got a good team. We're um, successful. We survived the pandemic. Uh, a lot of my friends didn't survive the pandemic. And that led me to where we are today. Because I was thinking, as, uh, as restaurateurs, how can we... How can we uh, get involved with cryptocurrency? Because I truly believe being in crypto for the last few years myself, um, just trading and then and, uh, joining an admin team of a previous token, uh, I, I just think that cryptocurrency is the way forward. But there are some issues with cryptocurrency. One of them is the, uh, the lack of mass adoption. And really for cryptocurrency to get where it's going to go, which is mass adoption, we need to convince normal people that know nothing about it or are afraid of it to get involved. So my thinking was, well, how do I do that? And uh, we need to have cryptocurrency used on a daily basis. So buying things that are, are normal, are normal transactions, rather than a Tesla or stuff in the metaverse, right? where it's just based on the computer. It's, we need people to be using it day in, day out to be comfortable with it. And then once that becomes the case, then we're into a whole new uh, world and uh, retail money is, is not the only money that's in the space. So how, how I came about it was that I've got restaurants, so I thought restaurants is a, a great way to introduce it to people and convince them to start using cryptocurrency in my restaurant initially. And I thought, well, how would you go about that? And the, what I came up with was if it's my restaurant, and so it would be the EE chain restaurants, we will have a discount of 25% on anything you buy in the restaurant, provided you pay with EE tokens. And if you pay, uh, it, and if what you'll see on the menu is two prices, there's the fiat price and there's the crypto price. And if you're a normal person, you'll be looking at it thinking, well, why can't I pay 25% less? That's amazing. It's because you don't. And then it's a case of, well, how do I get crypto in order to pay it? There will be a QR code on the menu, which will lead to our app. Our app will have a purchase uh, button on it. And it will also be a wallet, and it will also be able to send like a normal trust wallet or MetaMask wallet. Also on there, um, 
in order to convince uh, other restaurants to take it, we're going to have a directory to show locally uh, what eateries or hotels or pubs accept EE tokens so that you can easily find those places to, to spend your crypto in. That, uh, and, and this is, uh, it, so this is how it's, it's evolving. Um, one of the areas of pushback that we thought we'd get from restaurants is, yeah, that's, that's what, all well and good, but prices might be volatile. How do you uh, stop your price being truly volatile going up and down in the, in the course of a sitting while someone's sitting there? And the, what we're going to do is we're going to pair ourselves uh, with stable coins. And we launched V1 in December, but we've actually stopped V1 now, and we're migrating to a V2 right now. And the V2 launches on the 27th of April via an IEO on La Token, which is going to be our new exchange, our first exchange that we listed the V2 on. So the, the IEO is three rounds, six days each round. There's going to be a small amount of tokens available in round one at the lowest price. Then the price increases in round two. Price increases again in round three. And then the price increases to start trading on the 16th of May. So... For anyone that wants to buy tokens quickly, uh, if they're convinced by this AMA, then the best place to do it will be to get onto La Token on the IEO and buy early before the uh, before it starts trading on their exchange and on PancakeSwap. Now, let me ask you, what differences did you make uh, to where you know you're migrating from the V1 to the V2? Good question. So when I, when I initially minted the first V1, I minted 100 trillion tokens. And it quickly became apparent that we wouldn't need 100 trillion tokens, so we burnt 98 trillion tokens. That caused an issue for us because it messed with the uh, the market caps on Coin Market Cap and therefore Trust Wallet. And people were looking at the market cap, and it, it wasn't being reflected as the true circulating supply market cap. Right. So we tried. We tried writing to them. They wouldn't do anything about it. We, try, uh, we tried writing to BSC Scan. Um, they finally amended the number, but even still, it still says 100 trillion tokens with a little note next to it saying that 98% has been burned. We sent 98 trillion tokens to the dead wallet. Uh, on top of that, we have decided that tokenomics long-term for something that we're trying to do is not going to be... Uh, uh, the right way forward. So the deflationary tokenomic aspect of it. So if we want um, for passive reflections, that we're not going to give any reflections out. There's going to be no 10% buy and sell tax anymore. And it's just going to be a straight in and out. Really? And then there'll be a staking option. Yeah. So a staking option as well. We have got, I'll, I'll explain a bit further about the stuff in the ecosystem that we've already got uh, in line uh, in a second. But on top of that, um, we, we originally we were nine decimals and we've got some very large investment coming in and they, the very large investment in terms of millions of dollars has been pledged. Um, they were saying that they want us to go on to Binance and KuCoin and Gate.io. And to get on Binance, they won't accept you with tokenomics or with nine digits. Correct. So that is the reason, the true reason that we actually got rid of them. It just helped clean everything up so we've reduced um so where we were at two trillion at the end of v1 we're actually going to start v2 with 200 million only 200 million total supply gotcha 200 million yeah i'm taking some notes here i just uh, keep track of everything with you guys now i i wanted to ask you as far as you know you, you mentioned something very important about mass adoption and I think a lot of it comes with, you know, I think a lot of people, are, I think the masses are very interested in crypto, but I think that there's a fear because of the learning curve. So in order for, you know, mass adoption really to take place, we have to, you know, really make it simple for, uh, you know, people to do it. So let's go back to your app for a second. Now, let's see, say somebody's at a restaurant and they see the two prices, one for fiat, one for crypto, you know, using your platform and app, 25% cheaper. Um, how quickly are they able to use your app and actually get set up? Like, do they actually have to set up like a separate trust wallet and kind of go through all that, adding your contract no. address and all that? Because that's what I think can intimidate some people. Or does your app kind of uh, 
kind of like an exchange would kind of hold the keys to a wallet are people able to store money on your exchange not exchange on your app like like purchase with fiat and you know keep money on there to where they can just immediately use your app yeah so we're going to be at the moment we're, we're talking with um, moonpay ramp and simplex we're going to onboard one of those guys onto the app as a payment so you can go straight in from your credit card to buy an ee tokens then they'll be stored inside they'll be delivered to your wallet your wallet will be a uh, will have a, a wallet address obviously so that will be it, effectively it's like trust wallet but you're able to buy tokens immediately um in, in a credit card if you wanted if you had a trust wallet right now and we're trying to buy v2 or v1 You'd have to first get B and B, then go right. to Pancake Swap, then swap it. Yep. So we want to avoid all of those those steps. Try and make it as simple as possible for everybody. Yeah, because that's the issue. I, I think you know I, I did something not that long ago where I was trying to uh, write out instructions, starting from the very beginning of how to you know purchase a coin on Pancake Swap. And by the time I wrote out the instructions, it was like eighteen different steps. And I'm looking at it, and I'm just like, this is crazy. You know, to somebody yep. who doesn't understand and, you know, is brand new to crypto, I, it's it could be so intimidating. So the more steps that you can, uh, you know, eliminate, the better. So, like, with your app, you said that they will still have a wallet. Will it be a separate wallet to where they'll be able to purchase other crypto on it as well? Or will it be a wallet inside of your app that stores their money just inside of their app, your app? No, we're going to allow um, the the blue chip um, tokens to be on there and also stable coins. Okay. So we're not going to give uh, utility for someone like Doge or Shiba Inu, um, gotcha. because we've got we, we, uh, we've got at the moment I've got eight hundred and forty two restaurants in England that have agreed to take the token. Amazing. So just I I've got meetings. I've got a restaurant in New York that's agreed to take it. But they've, they've also want me to go to New York and meet with a load of other restaurateurs. They're going to set a meeting up for me um, with the heads of all the restaurants there. So I just have to do one pitch to, to, look, to try and get more New York restaurants on. And then I've got guys in Miami that are currently actively looking for me as well. Um, we've got some restaurants over there that said they're prepared to take it as well. Um, I've also, I'm in Wales, which is not England. Uh, Wales, I've, I've just signed up the restaurant of the year in Wales. Uh, my restaurants are in Wales. And so we've got other restaurants in Wales that are about to take it as well. So all in all, we're, we're around about 900 restaurants. Um, but we see it being a global currency. And therefore, members of my team are all, are all over the world. We've got members in Sweden, Turkey, Persia, um, Australia, uh, India. Um, so... What we want is we want this to be like the Airbnb of the hotel uh, right. industry or or the Uber. I mean, they went in and disrupted those those uh, areas. We want to disrupt the hospitality industry yeah, in you the know, same way. And you know what? Uh, you Like you said, this can definitely be a global program. But, you know, you are only one person. So, you know, you're definitely going to have to almost set up a uh, network of, you know, reps around the world that will be able to sell and educate this to, you know, restaurants within the areas so that you can hit for all sure. these different areas, right? Yeah, we're going to have an affiliate program for people that sign up restaurants for us. Really? Okay. As well as, well as a sales force. So, uh, you know, if for individuals, if you've got an aunt or an uncle or a friend who's got a restaurant, you can just say, look, Watch these videos. This explains how it all works because we're, we're, we've got some instructional videos already on the website, but we're actually going to have some uh, even easy to understand videos created um, with a spokesperson uh, to just just to get it across there. I mean, for restaurants, there's no barrier to entry. There's no um, there's no sign up fees. There's no monthly costs. We're not we're not charging them any money whatsoever in order to accept our token. So there's a that's the premium version. But the premium version will be if you want to be at the top of the local charts, because imagine there's six or seven restaurants in your area. Right. You're, you're looking to spend your token. Where do I go? I've got a choice of six or seven, but people people are lazy. Uh, they look at the top ones only. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a premium that we, we can promote you above everybody else as part of um, that service that we can offer you. Right. But you're, you're, as a restaurant accepting it, there'll be a list. you'll be listed anyway, so that you'll be a dot on a map and they can zoom in on the map and, and look for you and it'll be geolocating as well 
Now, I, I know this is primarily, obviously, the hospitality industry that you're targeting, but there's another growing industry that I could see this being a use case for. And I don't know that if you've considered this yet or even you know thought about it yet or you have it as something in the cards, but this seems like that this service and this app could be a huge match for the marijuana industry for legal dispensaries. Because I know they have well, a lot of banking issues and, you know, I, I think yep. accepting crypto uh, and your token and your platform would be just a, a perfect match for it. If, if I'm wrong, tell me. But uh, is that something that anybody has brought up at this point yet? Yeah, well, part of the part of our ecosystem um, is actually going to be these hydroponic chambers and farms that we're growing. Gotcha. So I've already, I've already got in the UK, I've already got four sites of super farms that we're going to have. Um, but each restaurant can have a growing chamber themselves, a hydroponic chamber that you can control via the internet. So you don't even have to be in its presence to, to run it. So these chambers that, that are growing our superfoods, we've already had a conversation with um, a, a, a medical marijuana grower that they're interested in taking it themselves. So we are, uh, it's something that we've, it's, it, it's there, we've discussed it. It's not, it's not something that we've actually gone after um, actively right now, but like you have seen the opportunity, we've also seen the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, especially in the United States now that half of the uh, states are, you know, having legal marijuana in dispensaries and medical dispensaries, you know, they still have banking issues you know, with, you know, yeah. where to put their money. And, you know, I think that if you could, you know, partner up with uh, some of those and get them to, you know, work with the program and get rid of the high fees, because, you know, at, at this point, you know, the fees are what really kills these restaurants, you know, read the red. Now you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you, you're in the restaurant industry and, you know, margins are fairly slim from what I know about, you know, restaurant industry, not only with just the markup on food, but the amount of waste that you have with, you know, people returning orders and remaking, you know, food. I, I could imagine that I, I may be wrong on this number, but I, I could imagine at least 15 percent of orders that go out end up having to get remade or comped. I mean, is that true or is that number way too high? No, in my restaurant, it's, it's almost zero. Well, that's great. Um, we're, yeah, we're, we're really good. My chefs are really good as well. But that's not the um, case for the, everybody, though, right? No, 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 it's not the case for everybody. Um, but the actual charges that this is going to uh, improve upon, is, it's going to put between 5 and 7% of every transaction back into the pockets of the restaurateurs. Because in order for you, uh, in order for me or any restaurant to accept a debit card or a credit card, there's a number of things that we have to have in place, peripherals that are, have to be there before you can even take the payment. So you've got to have a phone line, a business bank account. You've got to have a router, a broadband, Wi-Fi. You've got to have a terminal. Uh, you, all of those cost at monthly, uh, on a monthly basis. Then every time you have a transaction, there's a fee to Visa or MasterCard or whoever the actual uh, the card terminal the provider is. Gateway, yeah. Yeah, the payment, yeah, the payment gateway. Uh, so all of those, when you add all of that up, you lose between 5 and 7%. Now, to accept cryptocurrency, you just need a QR code, and that's it. So with our app, you I mean, just like with a normal Trust Wallet, if I wanted to send you some money on Trust Wallet, I just scan your your, bar, your QR code, and I can send and make the transaction, and then you get it. You don't um, – but you can have that QR code on a bill, on the till, on the menu, and people could just – send it over, show you they've concluded the transaction and they've paid. The, those funds are in the trust wallet or the, the receiving wallet immediately. You don't have to wait three to five days for your transactions to get approved. Uh, you're not paying a middleman any money. This is a true peer-to-peer -peer transaction and it's paperless. So all of those things, it, it just all adds up. When you add all the small incremental pieces together, we'll be saving between 5 and 7% then the margins start to come back into the restaurant tour's favour. So it makes sense for them to take the token. When I've explained it to the guys I've been speaking to, it's a no-brainer. It's like, yep, yeah, we'll take it. We can see it. And eventually what this will do is it will kill MasterCard and Visa. And even if MasterCard and Visa, and they are looking at it, even if they try to come out with their own payment system for crypto, they will still want to charge those percentages. And they will still want you to have a terminal that you have to pay a monthly fee on. 
So you need to get rid of all of that and kill that those people, kill that business model. That's gone. Crypto is 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 the way forward. So what you're saying is you could disrupt the industry to the point to where the old way of doing it, where you have to have the visa terminals and pay all those fees. You could have restaurants that open up and just tell them, you know what? No, I, I don't need this. I'm just going to go you know, straight with your platform right here and save all that money right off of the bat and start to transition people into getting used to this being the new norm. Is that correct? Absolutely correct. Hmm. That's a, it's a wonderful business model, Paul. I got to tell you, like I said, I've been excited to uh, hear what you have to say. You know, we've been talking back and forth about different stuff over the last couple of weeks. And, you know, I've obviously read your white paper and, you know, checked out your website and all. But I really wanted to get into the meat and potatoes, so to speak, of this and, uh, you know, really find out, you know, what's going on with this. And uh, it, it's absolutely amazing, I think, what you have going on. How did you... Uh, how did you put your team together? How did you meet some of the guys on your team? So um, when I when I got into crypto, uh, just a brief history. I did. I was watching it for about six months before I made my first purchase. And my first purchase was Matic. Uh, Matic really blew up, so I was I was really lucky. Um, then I I sold all my Matic, and then I put I decided to put my money into three other tokens. One was Safe Moon. Uh, oh, one was Elon. <laughs> yeah. And the other one was Aquago. I like the other two because they're um, they were charities. So I was thinking I'll do a bit for charity, and then the Safe Moon was pure indulgence. Um, now it just happens that I I know the original COO of Safe Moon as well. Um, personally, as a mate of mine, but I didn't know he was in Safe Moon when I bought it, which was a bit of a weird coincidence. Um, but uh, so I met. All the guys in my team are either uh, from my days at Elongate or in Aquago. And we've, we've gained some other new guys along the way, but um, my core team came from Aquago. We were all on the admin team together. I was, a, I was a whale, probably one of the largest whales in Aquago, got into the admin team, um, was part of the migration team that took a V1 to V2 for a renounced contract for 40 odd thousand people. It was, uh, it was a nightmare. I've got to say a nightmare. I learned a lot, a lot through uh, that experience. Yeah. That seems to be how it works out. You know, you, you meet some guys that you trust and that you kind of click with and have some, some of the same aligned values. And, you know, you kind of just go from there. Uh, I've been watching a lot of shark tank lately. So I'm going to ask you a shark tank question here. How do you okay. go from a thousand restaurants to, 50,000 restaurants. What is your plan? I know you mentioned an affiliate program, but how do you get from 1,000 to 50,000? That is, that's all to do with marketing, PR, and Salesforce. That's what we need. So we've got, um, we've got a, the Caduceus uh, network. I don't know if you've heard of the Caduceus guys. I've heard they, of them, but I'm not too familiar with them. Why don't you explain what you're doing with those guys and the whole Binance? You know, I know you mentioned a little bit of it to me. So why don't you know, explain how that's going to work? Yeah, so the Caduceus was a billion-dollar fund that was put together, and they, they want to create their own ecosystem and in the metaverse. The 300 million of that fund has come from Berkshire Hathaway, so they're not um, they're not insignificant players. They the what they're trying to do uh, is they're they're taking tokens into their ecosystem. The initial tokens they take in, they buy a percentage of, and they're currently buying eight percent of each token, and and then holding that that percentage for you know a period probably five years when it, we're discussing five years at the moment with them so it, we will be on their blockchain we're not going to be solely on their blockchain um we're going to still stay on the binance smart chain but we'll we'll be able to bridge across to them and then uh, they part of the stipulation is when they come in they're going to want us to as i said earlier get on to binance um because it's going to help them they're creating their own stable coin, which is going to be called Obel. Um, so we'll be pairing against the Obel. And the uh, the money that they're going in and putting in is going to be in part of the liquidity pool, but most of it is going to be for marketing and PR. So th that's a big financial backing that can really, you know, get you to where you need to go. And you can save a year or two's effort in marketing and all with that type of fund, right? For sure. Oh, man.
I mean, it's 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 a, it's really it's a real big stimulus for us. So they they actually launched their um, blockchain and ecosystem on the 16th of May, and we had to have everything ready before the 16th of May. So hence why the the IEO starts on the 27th of April, and the IEO ends round three ends on the 13th of May. We then have two days in which to distribute the V2 tokens to the new holders, um, and the V1 holders, the current V1 holders, get their airdropped on the 15th of May, a day before. So the, the V1 will have theirs prior to the V2 getting any of theirs. Now, and then we I, list... Go ahead. Yeah, well, please go ahead. Keep going. No, no sorry. That, that was, I was finished. Okay. Now, um, you know, being that you have such a use case... Now, I, I, I hate saying this because it's such a cliche that people use, but uh, people always say, you know, there's use cases in the real world. Well, now with your, you know coin it really is a use case in the real world and just it, it, it seems like it's pretty much almost tied to it um you know i'm trying to think of how i want to word this question um it almost seems like the price of your coin isn't even going to matter because of how it's going to be used like i know some people buy things you know just based off of the chart and the movement of the uh you know the coin but it just sounds like you know what your project's going to be that it's really just the uh, you know use case of it that really is going to matter. Yeah, but there, there will there is room for growth because we've got lots of things that are coming. So we will be building restaurants and owning our own chain of eat, eat restaurants, as well as having other restaurants accept our token. Uh, we can't make other restaurants give a discount that we can give uh, as the eat, eat chain. So, but what you what I imagine will happen in the future in terms of that is that restaurants will start competing against each other and therefore start offering deals to EE token holders two for one on one day maybe or, or whatever it is to try and get that football in. Um, but we've got uh, so in terms of what the token will uh, hold, the actual the, the business structure, we've got restaurants, we've got buildings, we've got farms, we've got food um, production, and we've got. Um, ingredients as well so we're we're being part of the supply chain to our restaurants but also to other restaurants so we'll be able to sell superfoods that we're going to be growing on our in our super farms so you're looking to just take the middleman out of this all together from you know the farms all the way up to you know the ingredients for the restaurants to owning a, the whole series of restaurants themselves you're looking to have the entire you know the whole pie yeah, well, we. I think it's the only way that you can do it and, and really force cryptocurrency um, out there. Uh, I mean, it, you, because what will happen is you'll get, let, let's say McDonald's, for instance. McDonald's, look at the idea and go, my God, we've got so many restaurants, let's make our own McDonald's coin. But Burger King won't take McDonald's coin. And uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken or you name, a, you name a restaurant chain, they're not going to accept the McDonald's coin because it's going to improve McDonald's. So... They're all, they're all either come out with their own coins or they'll start accepting a generic coin. So we'll we'll start with a, our coin being the generic coin, and, and that's the way forward. But we do, I mean, our ambition is to have our own restaurants, but not to the point where we threaten McDonald's or because then they'll just stop accepting our token. But we, we do want restaurants that we want to offer prizes from our restaurants to holders. So... Um, like they can come to an opening of a restaurant on us. We'll pay for the travel, accommodation, and the food. We'll have Zoom meetings with our chefs. So you'll, you can win a one, an hour Zoom meeting with the chefs. You can talk about menu ingredients, how to cut, you know, the city, whatever you want to talk with the chefs about, you can talk to the chefs about. We'll have live streams coming from the restaurants. Um, you can win food. You can win prizes. You can win. There's so many things that we can do in the real world that you can't do in the metaverse just by owning restaurants. Now, what kind of restaurant you're, you're talking about opening up a whole like line of eat, eat restaurants? Um, I know it's probably a fluid plan right now, but what type of restaurants are these going to be? Are these going to be like fine dining, sit down restaurants, or are these going to be more like you know fast, you know, food or you know, sm like you know, quicker turnaround type of restaurants? No, we want. Um, so my restaurants I've got at the moment are Italian, uh, Italian food. We make oh, real pizza and real, and real pasta dishes. Yeah, and we, we fly most of our ingredients in from Italy. So, um, we you know, we we do it properly. But 
there's nothing to say that we won't have eat burger chain or eat steak chain or eat Italian chain or eat Mexican or whatever that, you know, each one could be eat, 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 bang, and then whatever it is. So we don't want to pigeon our, pigeonhole our restaurants to just being one type of food. Oh, that, 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 that's smart. That way you can just brand it under the eat, eat name and just have yeah. all, all different, you know, type of su- subsidiaries of different types of uh, restaurants, burger chains, Italian, uh, different. That, that's smart. That's very smart. You well, must I mean, have. Gordon, you must have. A, it's got. <laughs> Sorry. No, go ahead, please. No, I was just going to say Gordon Ramsay uh, has got different types of food. He's got the Gordon Ramsay steak now, um, and burgers. So it's, it, I'm, I'm, we're not reinventing the wheel. We're just seeing what's work, what works, what's good, and then yeah, we'll take advantage of that. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, that's a way to do it. You know, the, the people who paved the way by doing those type of things, you find out what works and, you know, what doesn't work. And then you're able to kind of, you know, just come in and, you know, refine it to where it's a, a ready to go model with all the uh, the good aspects of it. And you can get rid of the things that didn't work. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. And it, there's always room to improve as well. So when we see something that's uh, that, that we should improve upon, we will certainly do that. Now, let me ask you, since you're going to to really make this be a global, you know, uh, industry and uh, platform that you're using here, obviously, you're going to, like you said, uh, rely on your affiliates to kind of do this. Do you have um, anything you can say about the affiliate program and how it's going to kind of work? Well, we because there's no fee to we're not charging anyone a fee to um, sign up with us. It's very difficult to uh, work out how to reward people for signing restaurants up um it's something that we're talking about at the moment do we reward them in e tokens which is probably the way we, we will do it because it increases our holders but it also increases volume because i want to spend those e tokens um so so that's that's how we think we're going to do it right now it's there's nothing hard and fast yet but what we what we are saying to these restaurants is for every transaction you accept there will be a two cents fee uh, one cent is going to go to our um, Saber Swap, which is is the guys that are running the app in the background for us um, under the Lightning Network, and one cent is going to go to us. So we will have money to, um, and, and it, one cent doesn't sound a lot, but if you think that last year Visa did eight hundred and fifty billion transactions alone, so if we if we took ten percent of their business, which is eighty five billion transactions um, in the long run, uh, all get all charging one cent. We're doing okay, and we can afford to, to pay for things. So, we, yeah, and it, I mean, in Chase is the biggest card user in America as well, so I'm not sure how many billions they've got, um, but there's more Chase transactions than Visa over there. Wow, that's, that's great. Um, let me ask you, um, as far – I know you said with V1 you were doing, uh, you know, temp, did you say that was a 10% uh, reflection back to the community? Yeah, it was ten, it was ten percent fee. Five percent went into the liquidity pool. Three percent went to uh, reflections, and two percent went to the marketing wallet. So now that you're getting rid of uh, that tax and it's going to be a no tax coin, are there any percentages of profits uh, that you make off of this that are going to go back to the community for you know being a holder of the token? So we're offering staking rewards uh, right from the outset. So immediately you can stake your tokens and, and earn your passive rewards that way. Okay, that's good. As well as all the prizes that we can offer through the restaurants. Now, once you launch the V2 and everything's you know ready to go, how close are you with the app to being actually usable at restaurants? Uh, I would I would say we're probably four weeks away. Uh, last time I spoke to the guys, which was this week, they said they needed a, a couple of weeks. But if I said it was two weeks and then it became three, I don't want to be a victim of FUD Definitely. or anyone coming in saying, oh, you, you, you know, you can't stick to timelines. So if I say four weeks and they tell me two, then I think well, we're, we're sort of about right. Under promise, over deliver. That's the uh, that's the way to go. Unfortunately, not everybody in crypto gets that. So uh, that, that that's smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen Safe Moon. You know, I was the holder there for a long time, and I just see the amount of crap that went on there. So, um, you know, <laughs> I've learned from their mistakes. 
Yeah, I think I've been waiting for Crater with uh, Evergrow for about uh, four months now as well. So you know, that was supposed to be well, at the beginning of the year. So on on Aquagoat, we we were bringing out Aquaswap. Uh, so the, the head guy there was bringing Aquaswap, and it was I think they still haven't brought it out, and that's five or six months later. And they kept saying it's next week, it's next week, it's next week. And now it's six months. Yeah, it's bad business. It's bad business doing it that yeah. way. You know, just, you got to be honest with you know the community. It's, you know, we're the smart guys involved in this space. You know, there's a lot of us smart investors, and you know, I think people are more willing to be understanding if you're just honest with them. Like, look, you know, we want to make this right. It's it's going to take this long to do, and that way, you know, you get get rid of that fud, and you know, and then if you can over deliver and you know deliver it a little bit sooner that it makes you look even better but when you give hard timelines on things and then you blow past it and it's months and two later you start to lose investors for sure absolutely um I've, i see a question from pop noodle of naga about um what's the stop uber or just eat doing the same um i've actually met with the founder of just eat a couple of weeks ago and he told me that if we were still around in six months um we'd be on their app so he got it. The moment I started talking to him, he understood exactly what I was doing and, and said, yeah, it's amazing. So um, he actually lives in Wales, fortunately. So that was quite lucky. Well, that's a good question. That, that that could be really exciting for you as well. Yeah, but I think if, if, if it goes the way it could go, we could potentially be our, our next phase of our app would be to to, in, uh, to bring it on like a, a version two of the app or an upgrade, etc., would be to make an ordering system on there, which would kill Just Eat. Because what what you guys may not know about Just Eat is they charge fourteen percent of every transaction Ooh. as their fee. Jeez. So, as a restaurant, you're it's a it's a it, you know it's a two way street. You get more business, but you lose most of your profit, and you give it to them for running the app. Now, if we're only charging two cents a transaction, um, the likelihood is that we will we will cut Uber Eat down in half, maybe, and go for seven percent or five percent. Because the idea is to you know make this space a healthier space as restaurateurs. As I said, my friends, few of my friends lost their restaurants in the in the lockdown because they couldn't pivot their business and they had no income, so they just they closed. So the idea is to you know make us a bit more resilient, give us more money in our pockets. And, you know, some guys will keep that. Some guys will give their staff pay rises. And some guys will use it to open more restaurants. So the more restaurants, the better. I think you're coming along at a great time, too, because, you know, so many restaurants did close down during the pandemic in the United States as well. And, you know, the ones that did make it, you know, they're they're probably just scraping by and they want to keep as much money in their pockets, you know, as possible. And, you know, if you're able to, you know, put five, seven, you know, 10 percent back into their pockets on, you know, these transactions, it, it's a no brainer for them to, uh, you know, want to, uh, you know, get involved with something like this. And then when you couple it with, you know, a lot of these new restaurants are the younger generation that are growing up with cryptocurrency as, you know, seeing it as the future. You know, I think it's a harder sell for some of these, you know, people who have been in business for 40, 50 years and, you know, the owners are in their 70s and, you know, they're, they're fixed on their ways. But you have that whole new generation that's coming up, you know, knowing about crypto from a young age. And, you know, they're the ones that are getting into, uh, the restaurant industry now and in the next five to 10 years. So, you know, they're definitely the ones to target for sure. Yeah. And we've got to start somewhere, right? So, you know, it, it, it might be a bit of a slow burn initially um, for people. It's, it's all when a good saying I've got 900 restaurants, but what happens if there's only one transaction a week um, at each of these restaurants, because it's a slow burn, but eventually in, as you say, three to five years, it, it will be everywhere. And, it, it would just be a matter of course on padding crypto. It's card crypto or cash. And, uh, and by then, most restaurants will probably stop accepting cards because it's so much cheaper. Yeah. And we, we don't accept American Express. We choose not to expect, accept American Express over here because they charge too much. And they, they want to give rewards back to their customers, but they're making the restaurants pay for it. So most of the UK restaurants don't accept American Express. It'll be the next thing. Most of the restaurants will stop accepting Visa because they charge too much, cost too much. God, I could I could see an application with this. I, I know I don't know how it is in the UK, but 
food trucks are huge in the United States. And I mean, I could see, you know, food trucks as being a big industry that would want to, you know, make this with quick transactions and, you know, touchless and just make it as fast as possible. I, I could see that being an application for this as well, the food truck industry as well. Yeah, and also in the world, there's uh, there's a hundred billion dollar um, industry of food vouchers that are given out to employees as benefits, but they actually give them out as physical vouchers in places like Turkey uh, and the Middle East. This this could replace that as well. So employees will just be, get told, right, have a wallet, and we'll just ship you some uh, tokens into your wallet. So less printing, less less stress, less cost, less admin for them. They just do a um, you know, uh, 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 take a snapshot of all their wallet holders and then just send them tokens every week or every month instead of their paycheck. Oh, man. I got to tell you, this AMA is doing two things. It's making me really, really excited about your coin and program, and it's making me very, very hungry. <laughs> I, I'm on this uh, I'm on this low-saturated fat diet for my high cholesterol, and it's killing me because Italian food is just, you know, I'm from Philadelphia. And, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Italian. So, you know, I have Italian yes. sausage and gravy and meatballs flowing through my veins, which is why I'm in the predicament I'm in right now. So, uh, <laughs> oh, my God, I'm missing Italian food so much and all the cheese and just sausage and meat. It's just my, it's uh, killing me. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big guy as well. I'm 6'2", 230, 235. I'm 6'3", 235. That's, where I, that's what I am as well. <laughs> I always say never trust a skinny chef because if that's you've got a skinny, skinny. chef, they're not, eat, they're not eating their food. Don't, yes. they, they don't, if they don't eat their food, why do you want to eat it? Yeah, that's what my mom always used to say growing up. Never go into a restaurant where you can't smell their food from the outside and walking in. Yeah. And never trust a skinny chef, especially in an Italian <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, I agree with that. Your Italian restaurants. Now, I know that there's a, you know, I'm, I'm a South Philadelphia Italian, but I know American Italian food is much different than, you know, classic Italian food and traditional. Are your restaurants more like uh, the traditional Italian food or like more like the American Italian food? Uh, no. So we do I do Neapolitan pizzas style. Um, so we do a cold ferment on our on our dough. Um, our pasta is made with double zero flour. Um but we do a number of pasta dishes and a number of pizza dishes, and then we do specials. And then, you know, we've got all the starters as well, meat boards and uh, uh, burrattas and mozzarellas and things like that. So I would say that we're, 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 we're like a modern version, not, not the classic. Uh, we don't do like massive meatballs and spaghetti um, pasta. Yeah. We, we tend to do uh, – we don't drown it in sauce either. So, um, you know, there is sauce on our pasta. But it's it's uh, it's, a, it's a, an addition, not not a, 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 like a bowl of soup well, with some pasta in it. You know, if you ever go to the uh, Northeast, if you ever go to like Philadelphia, New York area, you'll find all the Italians. They call the sauce gravy. I don't know if you've come across that yet. Have you yeah. ever met, have you ever yeah. met any East Coast Italians that call it gravy yet? Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. Bless them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's when I grew up. And, you know, uh, now I live in the southeast in the United States. And, you know, I say gravy and, you know, gravy is a whole other thing down here with biscuits and gravy, you know. So they assume that I'm talking about, you know, like brown gravy or like uh, sausage gravy. And I'm like, no, red's, you know, gravy. And they're like, oh, you mean sauce? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if you want to look at my restaurant with the, uh, the pizzas and the pastas, it's on if you if you've got Instagram and you look up the Yard Pizza Cowbridge, that's my restaurant and that, all that food on there is my real food made it by us by hand. Oh my god, I'm so hungry right now. That, that will make you hungry, I can tell you, I assure you. Yeah, I just ate like a multi-grain bagel for a, for lunch. It's great. <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> I just. Uh... Yeah, I miss it. You know, over on the East Coast here, you know, we're big on like our Italian sausage and meatball parm and eggplant parmesan and uh, yeah. chicken parmesan. And, you know, I know they're not like really traditional Italian dishes, but, you know, that, that's the stuff I grew up on. And, oh, man, do I love it. <laughs> I was in um, I went to the, the Bitcoin conference in Miami. Uh, yeah, tell, yeah you were ago. telling me about that. Yeah, that was amazing. But the food that I was eating there was not that good, I've got to say. I didn't eat any Italian food, but um, everywhere I went, I was disappointed. 
Really? That's who I found a little bit. Yeah, honestly, I had a lobster on Ocean Drive. wasn't that good. And that when the girls asked me how I wanted it, I just wanted it grilled with a little bit of garlic butter and that's it. And she's like, you, what, you don't want all the cheese on it? Went, no cheese. <laughs> you, don't want all, you don't want all the other toppings? I don't want any toppings. I just want grilled lobster, a little bit of garlic butter, please. So she looked at me like some weirdo. <laughs> yeah, I, I just moved out of Florida. I had lived in Florida for the last 13 years. I wasn't down in the Miami area. I was more down towards like Tan the Tampa, Orlando area. But uh, yeah, Cuban foods, you know, big down there. So did you get any Cuban food yeah. while you were down there? Yeah, I got. I got uh, no, I didn't. I was supposed to go to um, one of the, one of my guys' houses, uh, but it just. I, I, if I'm being honest, I was a bit wasted one night, and I, I was supposed to go there that night, and I just ended up back at my hotel sleeping. That's um, okay. So. Uh, I, I missed out on uh, on some really good local home food. It's a bit of spice, so yeah. I, I was gutted. Yeah, the seafood and the shrimp are really good in uh, Florida. And we have this fish called grouper. I don't know if you've ever had grouper. Yeah, yeah, I've got grouper. Yeah, yeah, grouper is delicious. Uh, as well, it's probably one of my favorite fish to eat. But uh, yeah, you know, surprisingly, I live in South Carolina in the uh, Greenville area. And I got to tell you, I just moved here about eight months ago. And, you know, coming from Philly, you know, we had great food. And even Florida had some, you know, good food, but uh, not a whole lot of it. But uh, when I moved up here, it is just a melting pot of food from just all over. And, you know, I was so surprised by the food scene here and how delicious it was. Just all kinds of different nationalities of food. And I was really shocked at how good the food is, you know, around this area too. But as you could tell, I could talk about food for hours. I'm a, I'm a foodie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, me too. Me too. But I, I've seen Chubbs has had a question to um, yeah, when Chubbs. is the best time to get in on V1 or migrate or wait for the IEO. Well, I mean, unfortunately, V1 is now ceased trading. We withdrew the liquidity from the pools, so no one can trade the V1. Um, the migration is an automatic migration. Everyone's keeping their V1 tokens. We're just going to airdrop the new supply of V2. Uh, so the only thing that he can do now is just buy in the IEO. And I would buy the IEO uh, right in round one, if, if you can. I know some guys that are buying large sums of the IEO, but there won't be that much available in round one or round two. The majority of it's in round three, but that's a higher price. Yeah, we definitely... Uh... <laughs> Hey, you, you've convinced me for sure. And uh, I think a lot, you know, a lot of people that hear this afterwards, I, I wish just everybody was able to be in on this call because this is just such an important thing that you're doing. And uh, it's really going to it's really going to take the world by storm, you know, in the food industry. I'm, I'm really convinced of it from, you know, everything that you've told me. Uh, I'll open it up to some questions for you guys to actually ans ask them uh, to Paul. You guys can yeah. just unmute. You don't have to raise your hand or anything. Hello. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, you're a little yes. bit low, noodle, but yeah. Low noodle, but yeah. Okay. Two checks. Um, really, really great, AMA. I completely get the concept because I'm a, I have a, a, a food truck down in Hampshire, so not quite on the same level as yourself. We go more for this the street food angle, so I nice. Nice. Buy and completely get it. Um, with regards to the the restaurant end. Would there be any formal sort of training for the actual cashiers and the restaurants to go through the process? What What's the plan on that for the restaurants? Okay, I, yeah, so for the, I'm, I've got a big chain um, that I'm going to go to. They're, they're going to roll it out in terms of five restaurants initially. Um, they want me to go and train their staff in how to accept the tokens, which is, I mean, it's, it's really simple. I didn't want to make it uh, because the, the guys I'm talking to don't understand crypto. So I've got to go there and explain what crypto is first. And I said, I'll spend the whole day in one restaurant each day um, and explain it. But we're going to have videos that are going to be on our website to show you just how to do it anyway. But I'm more than happy to talk to people and explain how it is. If you're in Hampshire, I'm more than happy to drive down there as well. So it's a nice part of the world. I'm over in just outside of Cardiff. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and the other thing is, on the customer journey... Oh, are they going to be just trying to think? Thinking that obviously we deal with not probably not as many customers as you guys do, but when it's on full chat, it's busy. You know how stressful it gets. Um, yeah, yeah. Would we put the emphasis on the the user or the the customer 
um, or the emphasis on the restaurant. I'm just trying to think, would it be easier for adoption if they just used their credit or debit card, but we were to do everything on our end? So that way it breaks down a, a potential barrier. Because if you've got 30 servings and you've got three chefs all stacked up and yours are coming in, you really don't, as you know, do not have time to add another task to it. So just trying to make it as easy adoption as possible. Yeah, I think, I mean, eventually what happened is these these people would come into your restaurants because they've already bought the crypto and they're looking for places to use that crypto. Or if, they, if they've if got crypto at the moment, they'll do a quick swap on Pancake Swap into EE -E tokens, and then they'll be looking for places that accept it. So you've got, you've got the people that um, are, I, I, I suppose the best way of putting it is don't want to be seen uh, to have money in their account so they, they want to survive or live in the world of crypto and if you're making it available to them they can go and use their crypto you've got other guys that have just got crypto and it'll be cool to use like to say that I, I can use my crypto in a restaurant now but then you've got the other ones which are i haven't got crypto i want to get crypto so if they if, if they're not if they're not au fait with crypto the idea will be we'll download the app go home learn you know become part of the ecosystem because our app will give them the gateway into our social media platforms so they can come into our social media talk to the team like on telegram that are running the token get some advice they can do it that way there's always going to be someone available to them um at 24 hours a day and then next time that they come to you they'll be able to use the tokens so it's you've got other guys that are a little bit more savvy and will try to do that that download and transaction immediately so it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a, like a mixture of everything, but I think long eventually it will just be a case of they will come to you already armed and loaded with uh, EE tokens. Another potential um, avenue, especially in the UK, as you're probably well aware, is now that markets and street food is becoming a massive thing in the UK. You've got things like um, Sum Up and Izettle Square, Dojo, etc. Have you looked about potentially? marketing yourself as a competitor to Lowe's because for street food and it's, it's a, a real way of getting mass adoption quite quickly as you know yeah I've got I, I've got Dojo in my restaurants and the regional director of Dojo came to see me about onboarding us as a, as a payment um, on their place and they've just signed 12 European countries and the USA so they're, they're actually going to be expanding really fast but uh, like you say, we could be them and not just be onboarded as they'll accept EE tokens. Perfect. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. I'm very, very happy. Really, really digging this one. So thank you. Thank you, mate. Thank you, mate. Now, Paul, I want to ask you, because what I can see happening with this is, you know, once this really starts to gain traction and it gets on the radar of other tokens, and they start to see that, you know, wow, you know, this is uh, this is really working. I want to get in on this. Are you going to ever open this possibly up to other tokens getting on board in your app and, you know, maybe charging them a fee to become part of your system to be able to be accepted in all your different locations as well? So that is a very good question. At the moment, like I mentioned earlier, if I was, if, let's say we are global in in a year's time we're being used all over the place and then shiba inu come to us and say like ah oh, can you can we come on your your platform right if i say yes for, for zero fee for no money they get an enormous boost of utility that they don't have right now correct or safety or whoever so why would we do that if, if the idea is we want uh we want stable coins and blue chip coins only and ourselves it's going to be very difficult just to start accepting um, lots of other tokens. It's it's not. I'm not saying the door's shut and we won't do it. It's just something that I don't see as being necessary because you know by the time we get there, um, we'll we'll have more tokens in circulation than they will. So it, all you'll have to do if you're one of their holders is just swap it on Pancake Swap for EE tokens. Yeah, and I think that makes sense then because then you're converting some of their tokens over to yours and, you know, getting holders that way. So, yeah.
that's definitely no. uh, it's definitely smart. I, I I could see that happening though, and uh, I, I could see that as a potential revenue stream for you. Uh, you know, just like you know, people charge exorbitant amounts of money for tokens to join. You know, different swaps and uh, exchanges. That that's what I was kind of thinking along those terms. But I, I think finance is saying, a million dollars, three million, isn't it? They charge depending on who you are. The right. Minimum fees five hundred thousand. The maximum is two million to go on Binance. So. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Absolutely. Yeah, and if this catches on the way, you know, I'm, I'm thinking and you're thinking this is going to catch on. I think people are going to be knocking down your door to get in on your uh, app. Yeah, I hope so. It's exciting stuff for sure. Uh, anybody else? Any other questions? Let me check the chat. And you guys can just unmute, just ask away. We covered a lot of uh, information in this uh, hour, though. We're definitely coming up on an hour, so uh, I'll let you go. It's getting a little bit late. We'll take time. Anyone else have a final question? No, I guess not. Well, Paul, I want to thank you so much for uh, coming to join me on this. And, uh, you know, you're a friend of the channel for sure. And, uh, I am going to be doing several videos uh, partnering with you. So I am very, very excited to uh, start putting out that content and, uh, you know, getting as many people to find out about this as possible. And I will be, I recorded this, I'm going to uh, edit it and I will send you over a copy of this so that you can post it in your group as well. And I will pin this in my group and have this on my youtube channel as well and definitely push as many people as possible to see this because you know we all dine out at restaurants you know that it's it's the one thing that as humans we all do you know some more than others but you know we all do this to some extent and you know just raising awareness of this that this is you know happening this is going to exist and this is going to be an option for you i think is you know the key thing to get this you know in everybody's brain Thank you very much. If anyone has any other questions, they're more than welcome to drop into our Telegram channel or email us. Um, email is info at eeat.finance. Um, and I'll answer them myself. Um, or, yeah, drop into Telegram. Um, you've posted our link on, the, on your group, so thank you very much for that. Um, more than happy to accept anyone in there. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, you are a member of my group. So, uh, you know, please feel free to from time to time post some stuff about your project. You know, that's what our group is for, for, you know, everybody to, you know, find out what's out there. Uh, you know, we don't do heavy shilling in the group. You know, we just post kind of stuff and then we discuss it. But absolutely, this is something that I want you to, you know, keep active with, you know, posting some stuff in the group about it and, uh, you know, let people know so we can, you know, get to get talking about this and, uh, you know, help you out as much as we can. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Awesome, guys. Uh, we have Paul with e Eat here. Definitely, you know, check these guys out and find out as much about them as possible. We got V2 coming up shortly and uh, some really huge things. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we'll be back with another one shortly. Have a great night, Paul. Take care. All right. Thanks, guys.